Hey guys, Angie here and welcome to the final episode of Creating Kuria. Um, at this point in time, it's actually post-production now, so I've, um, I've released the comic, I've printed it, um, and all of that is over. Um, so I thought I'll just um, finish this off the right way. So here we are. Um, so here, um, this is the page I was working on last episode. Um, this page and um, you can probably see the differences I've made here for the final print. I think that I've adjusted a few of the speech balloons. I've cleaned a bit of the trim. Are you gonna whack for me? Cool. Oh no, here we go. Um, so I've done a little bit of editing um, to have it pretty much ready to be put into a different software that I use for the printing. All right, this is interesting. Okay. Having a bit of a fit today. Um, so I didn't fill in that black there because, oh no, that was the edge. Hmm. Okay. I may have trimmed that off. But ultimately this is ready for the... But this is my final print here. Let me just see what I did there. This is the thing about um, making comics is that it is very easy to miss something like that detail. So here's the printed version um, of the... See, it's like actually... This page is like, yeah, the um, left-hand side. But that white that's shown up hasn't come up here. Maybe because I knew that it would get... um cropped out with the bend in the page because the bend in the page does sort of take a few millimeters out here and there but also the edge um, always gets cut off you can see there where it's being cut off um, at the trim yeah oh there you go um, so that was the page I was working on I edited like the positioning of the balloons and um, just a few sort of, I tweaked a few little um, visual things. So that's that. So then I save it as um, a PNG file and I put all my files that are finished into go on the same folder clip page, they're all the final pages. So here I have all my Clip Studio pages. I have a few that I've saved as like works and progresses for my social media and for Patreon as well that are named differently. Generally I name my file um, C6 which means, means um, Korea 6. 05 is the page number that will be um, officially used for the um, for the printing although the pages are kind of different because uh, when I actually put it all together because I have chapter pages so story pages that might be eight could actually be ten when I put it all together because there's actually like the chapter page before the story pages etc um, and yet I mean during this stage you've really got to I mean be aware some people don't really like design their pages to be two page spreads like which is left which is right but it's very important because if you don't keep track of what's left and right um, for the printing especially um, you can get a double page spread that's coming out incorrectly and I've seen it happen for some people um, but there's worse things that could happen I guess uh, so these are all my final pages there's a lot of them um, I might have mentioned earlier that this uh, chapter of Korea, the last one, is actually twice as long as the usual issue. So that was a lot of a lot more work, really, with editing. Um, yeah, but I, I got my head around it in the end. Um, these are just extra pages that I've incorporated into the final book that are like just thank you pages and credit pages and um, god I can't believe I've done it now 
Anyway, so I get all these files and I put them into a free software called um, Scribus, which is a really old software, but it does the job perfectly, if you ask me. Uh, I know a lot of people use InDesign, which is probably a, mm, more sophisticated and a bit smarter to use, but this is this is pretty good. So here I load in all my pages. Um, I've got it presented as double pages, so I can see um, when I export it that they're falling in the right, left to right sort of format. I kind of need to upgrade my PC for um, <laughs> these bigger um, comic productions, especially when I want to make a graphic novel, because this is just ridiculous. But the reason why um, it's running so slow is because each page is um, about 400 dpi. Um, so a comic book should be really um, a page like for a comic book should be 300 dpi and no less than that. So it's a little bit higher than what it needs to be. Dpi means um, dots per inch. Um, so that's the quality, I guess, of the the image format. Um, yes, yeah, so like I said, this this was just a lot to coordinate, really, um, and I did really well. You just got to sort of take something so big like this bit by bit and break it down as much as possible to have all those small wins along the way. So this is like a chapter page. Um, this is a double page, chapter page, and this kind of like made this issue of Korea more like a manga novel in a sense that it has like roughly 10 page chapters um, that, you know, follow the idea, an idea of one movement of the story. Um, and here in this chapter page, I've kind of um, tied in the story because it's showing um, the story is progressing between the chapters that um, Geraldine and Evelyn have found a way across the river even though they've been hijacked by Darek, the uh, antagonist. Uh, I'm really happy with this and it's came out really nicely in print as well. Um, probably the nicest pa double page in terms of like colour quality. I don't know why it worked so well. Um, I'll just show you the top of the page. So this is like, um, yeah, that's the introduction. That's kind of like another sort of chapter page um, that sort of progresses into the story here. It's got the establishing shot. If I remove this file, you can see that um, it's already in the right format for printing because this, these are the story pages, the inners of the comic. When I open up this, um, so that's the cover. Wait, let me get, I'll show you. Too close to the camera here. So that's the cover. That's like a separate file. That's the cover page. But these are the inners. So you want to start from the, the first, um, I guess, right-hand side page if you're printing um, Western style. I mean, yeah, that's right hand. So um, you got to sort of think of that as like a different page spread, um, which I'll show you in a second. Um, so I think that's a good thing to keep in mind. But so I made the same file for um, the actual double page spread that you see when you open up the cover. But um, this software knows that um, I've told it that don't use. I mean, obviously it won't. It'll only render the actual pages that have been formatted. Um, let's go down to the end if it wants to jump to the end. So all up there's 44 inner pages. So there's the final page. So this is the back of the comic and that's yeah, the final page. Um, 
I mean, that's not the the. I mean, that's something definitely you got to think about when you are creating a comic. Is that you really got to think in four page increments, um, because that's the format you print. You're going to print in. So, um, in a way, yeah, you've really got to sort of cater your story, um, keeping that format in mind. Because um, when I was creating this, I had like an extra page I was going to put in um, for a particular scene. Um, oh, that's right. It was this one. Um, I was going to put in another double page for another chapter, introducing chapter three, um, but I figured that I'd, I would have to add two spare pages that I just didn't really want to include because it was already getting large enough. Let's go to it. So what I did is that I included the chapter title at the end of um, a two-page sequence instead of creating two extra pages. Come on. Come on. So for this um, comic, um, while we're waiting for my computer to respond. I used a Copic um, type paper because I was using Copics. Um, the only thing about that was that it's not actually the best, here we go, oh my God. It's, um, it's better for Copics, it's designed for them, but it's not so great for um, inking on it because it's very sort of waxy, I guess. And so um, a lot of my line work wasn't as crisp you can't really tell of this kind of colouring, uh, but then I discovered that Copics actually actually work on a non, I found this paper that worked better on, um, which isn't even designed for Copics. So next time I do this kind of Copic ink stuff, I'm not going to use the same paper again. Although, um, in all fairness, you know, I'm pretty happy with how it turned out. Um, it's kind of nice. It's got that rugged look about it. I think it makes it a bit more true to the story and also ties it in better with the other issues and the other kind of um, shading work I have, especially in issue one where I've used like a um, Indian ink wash and it looks a bit similar. Um, so it's a bit of an homage to that. So here's um, what I was trying to get. So I've got the two page um, spread here and I've added um, the title down just there um, just to, you know, just to fit the t page economics without having to add extra stuff that wasn't necessary. It kind of works in a way and it kind of also um, works well for the, the story because um, kind of shows that what Geraldine is thinking of right now she's thinking back to her old girlfriend and how silly like she felt she was back then and it kind of makes light of that because it's sort of saying well now next you know she's just it's I don't know it downplays it a bit because it takes you out of the story with the chapter there because the chapter is kind of like the break the pause in the story so it's kind of like finalizing all that it's kind of putting it away saying well it wasn't that like, it was just I mean it was like a I think yeah it was a significant part of her life especially in the moment she's very confused about her own sexuality and it was like overwhelming for her then but now it's like saying that it's not really like such a big thing anymore and it sort of shows she's evolved as a person um so I didn't feel too bad, like not having the um, double page spread there. Um, so what I mainly check for in this stage is um, are the like the page trims, how things are like. Um, I will like export it as a PDF, so I check for spelling errors. I check that the pages are obviously in order, and I check that things are trimmed correctly because you don't want sort of the trim to cut something like lettering it's all in the safety zone there uh, check that like there's no white gaps in the edges of the pages 
Um, so that can that can take a lot of time, but I think the more you do it, the more you you kind of get um, prepared for it in the later stages. So um, you're always saving time every time you do something like this. Yeah. Ta-da! Um, that was like a screen tone I added because I thought mm, really needs some sort of speed line or something there for that tiger to jump out um, and it worked really well with those um, those li edgy lines I have there in the ink um, so happy with that yeah anyway so I'll show you my PDF files I'll show you I'll show you the cover page in Scribus first open Open. Oh my god. See, this is how old this program is. Okay, I'm not going to find it there. Yeah, I think it's good to like sort of come up with code names for your files because that way you can find them f faster. For your page files, anyway. Okay. Oh, these are just um, little doodles I've done for like page ideas actually this one's really cool I never used it I'll show you oh come on baby Come on, this is what I deal with. It's not so bad though, having a computer that needs a bit of time to think because it gives you a chance to stretch. And I'm, I'm not being silly about that because um, a lot of us creators making our comics, we spend too much time um, sitting down all day and it's good to just get up, stretch, um, you know, maybe um, make yourself tea or something. So here's this idea. I um, thought that was pretty cool. Maybe I'll use it somewhere else. Okay, let's find this other scribus cover. So that's story pages. Cover, C6 cover, open. I also um, highly recommend backing up your stuff, especially during production. Um, I uh, I don't really rely on. Um, I know some people have iCloud. I have. I don't really use that. Or I have Dropbox. Um, I only kind of use that when I send my thing off to the my files off to the printers. Um, but I use. Um, I'm really old fashioned. I use just uh, USB devices, storage devices. But I do it on multiple multiple ones during different stages I'm sure like you know using iCloud or something is really smart but I just feel kind of weird having all my stuff up in a cloud okay so here's the cover um, file so I've done like the double page like I've done the front and back in the same file so that's the actual back page there for printing the top that's my front page it's a back page it will not it'll like the computer will cut that off there and these are the inner front and back um, so yeah a lot more easier to coordinate that the only difference really between the formatting um, otherwise is that the bleed should be a bit um, like a bit um, wider so the bleed is like the what you allow um, give and take for the cutting of the um, the trimming of the page when it comes out of the printers because like the printers they might print something like this comic book and say an A3 oh my god the camera's too close but say that's like 
that's um, standard comic book size, that that leaf would come out at A3 size. So they got to cut that. So you got to tell like, um, you got to sort of format here in this line here, um, what you're allowing to be cropped. Um, so everything that you want to be shown, you should definitely have within this blue line here. Um, that's a safety zone or, and then this, that's a bleed that, that line there to the edge of the image or the page, that's the bleed. Um, so it's five millimeters usually for a cover and for the inner pages, you would probably give like two millimeters to three millimeters. Um, I don't know why, but I think um, the reason why you give more millimeters for the cover is because generally you use a thicker page stock and I think that um, it's slipperier to cut that. So you kind of got to give a bit more um, space like for, um, uh, it's kind of hard to explain because I don't know the actual technique, but they, I think it shuffles around, the paper can shuffle around a bit more when it's thicker. Um, I don't know. Um, it's a mystery to me. Um, so there you go. So after the, all of everything's fine, I do my final, um, uh, what's it, export for the PDF. I'll show you the cover. use that um, if you're looking for a printer um, you don't necessarily have to go to a printer that says that they're a comic book printer because a lot of printing places will do it you just got to give them the PDF file with the right um, sort of uh, crop marks and they'll know exactly what to do um, so this is how the file comes out once you um, export it this is the PDF um, so here like you have zero bleed for um, the middle of the page because you're not going to cut there so you don't need to put a bleed there but you can see here um, these marks here where they line up the guillotine and they go Chuck. so you just make sure everything's correct here and um, yeah that's it then you send it off to the printers and um, voila you get your comic. Woo! Um, yeah, so I might wrap it up there because um, it's been a longer episode than usual. But uh, I want to thank you very much for um, watching my series, for supporting me on Patreon. And um, this is the end of the current um, comic series career. But um, that's not to say that there's nothing left there. Um, some of you will know that I've... Um, been playing around with um, another, I guess, like a story that's set after Courier um, in the same world, same universe, same characters, um, and you know, there's a lot of potential there. So, um, you know, keep an eye out for that. Um, I've also been playing around with um, digital and um, other techniques as well. So, um, you know, stay tuned. Um, yeah. All right, um, you know, feel free to message me or reach out if you have any questions about self-publishing. Um, I'm always really happy to share what I know and um, also happy to get feedback. Thank you very much. All right, till next time.